situation here. Let's see what Darian can do. Stopped by McGee, but put back by Ben and McDermott. That's a goal for the Blue Wave. Jordan with a deep three. No good. Front rim. Jack Tierney with the rebound. Roll up with the three. That's good. Splash. Cut and turn, and he has now scored his first point. So J.P. Heron is on the board for Darianne and can't get it to go. Demonicus with the rebound and puts it back up go. and in. Nice offensive board by Lindsey Demonicus. Nice play by Vandenbroek there. Oh, she's got oh, there, 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 there is a short-handed goal by Shea Vandenbroek. Live from Bennett Rink in West Haven, Connecticut. It's high school varsity girls ice hockey on the DAF Media Network tonight. It's Darianne against Suffield Enfield in the finals of the Connecticut High School Girls Hockey Association State Tournament. Hi, everybody. Damian Andrew with you. So glad you could be with us. Joining me this afternoon on the broadcast is Dan Toscano. And we are just about ready to drop the puck here in what should be an entertaining matchup between the number two seed in the state tournament and the number four seed. Darian, the Blue Wave, come in as the number two seed. They are in search of a third straight state championship. Suffield Enfield, it's a combined team. They are in the state finals for the first time in program history, and the program is only two years old. So this is heady stuff for Suffield to get to the finals of a state tournament as I welcome in Dan Toscano. Uh, I had a chance to talk to uh, Suffield head coach Joe Gazi earlier today, and what a spot for his team to play a team like Darian, the two-time defending state champs, here in the state finals at Bennett Ring. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. This is as close as I think you can come in Connecticut Girls High School Hockey, the Blue Bloods against the up-and-comers. This program uh, from Suffield, and as you said, in its second year of existence, Darian obviously been around much longer and a tradition over the last half decade of being in this game a lot. As you said, winning it the last two years in a row. 
And you can be sure that they're ready for this game. You can be sure Suffield's ready for this game. The atmosphere here is electric. This is a championship game and the crowd knows it. You can hear the noise behind us. This should be a great one. And we are underway here from Bennett Rink in West Haven. Damian Andrew alongside Dan Toscano. Daring Ann in the blue sweaters. They are skating from left to right. Suffield in the uh, blue and maroon sweaters. They are skating from right to left. Just underway here, state championship on the line between the two seed Darian and the four seed Suffield Enfield. It is a combined team. It's actually Suffield Enfield Ellington MLC and Housatonic Regional. Can we can we use that every time we need to refer to them? Or we'll just go with Suffield, I guess. <laughs> we're just going to go uh, with Suffield for our purposes here this afternoon. So we're a minute into this game, first shift. And I don't know if you can see it watching at home, but the energy on the ice is amazing. Uh, the Darien team came out guns a-blazing, just watching the action out there, the, the activity, the contact, uh, the moving of the feet. Uh, there's no doubt that they're ready. Uh, the Suffield team seems to be up for the challenge as well. As I mentioned, Suffield in its second season of existence first year actually Dan as a varsity program they were a club team a year ago and the Wildcats right now of Suffield in their offensive zone attacking here puck in front of the net wow that was a, this is a great opportunity here for Suffield and it's cleared away by the Darien defense well that could have been an icing but it was close enough on net where the goalie didn't want to take a chance there but he saw that puck sitting right in the crease, waiting for somebody to poke it home. Thankfully for the Darien team, they were able to move it out of there without any harm. This is a Suffield team, Dan, with three All-State players on their squad. Well, we're, we're two minutes into this game, and we've got, we've got uh, a third line out there with the forward. So this is a young line, two freshmen and a sophomore. So. The Darien coaches are wasting no time in getting everybody on the ice in this game. I think a little bit of that has to do with working out some of the nerves, a little bit of nervous energy out there, and let's get them skating, let's get a little sweat on so they can get back to realizing this is the same hockey game they've been playing all year. Another opportunity here at the other end with the puck sitting right in the, in the crease, ready to be poked home. Luckily for Suffield, the goalie was able to get it out of there and the result of the play is an icing. So an icing call. Suffield comes into this game 19-2-1. As I mentioned at the outset, the number four seed. Darianne, meanwhile, the number two seed in the home whites. They are the home team in this state championship game and the two-time defending state champs. Yeah, the only, the only difference I could see in the records between these two teams as Darian continues to try to work it here in the offensive zone. Let's just watch to see how this play unfolds. What you're seeing here is one of the strengths of this Darian team, the ability to keep the puck in their offensive zone. You see the defenseman uh, uh, pinching up on the boards here to try to keep it in, and the other defenseman falls back to the red line. It's been a good 25 seconds here, and Suffield hasn't been able to get the puck out of the defensive zone. Here comes Suffield into Darien, Darien's zone as their offense looks to go to work under 12 minutes remaining in the first period between these two teams. Yep. A state championship on the line this afternoon from Bennett Rink in West Haven. Good no call there by the refs. You see, one of the side effects of, of the way Darien presses in the offensive zone, by the time Suffield got the puck up to the neutral zone, all they could really do was dump it down to get a change. That creates a turnover, and then Darien's up the ice again. And they really have to try to limit that if they want to keep fresh legs on the Suffield side. It's a great pass there up in front, just out of the reach of the, uh, number 20 there on Simsbury. Uh, Suffield, sorry. A number of three-sport athletes on this Suffield team as there are are a number of three-sport athletes on this Darien team. 
There comes Darianne, three on two into their offensive zone. Vandenbrook gets off his shot, and it is gloved by Suffield goalie, Caitlin Calden. And yeah, that was a great pass there off to the left wing. A really good shot on net. An even better save by the goalie, and a great job holding on to that puck and not leaving a rebound right there because our right winger was ready to put that home if she had. So an offensive zone faceoff on the far side of the ice for Darianne. Here's another shot on net by number seven. I'm not sure who that player is on Darian. Um, Toscano, I think. <laughs> that Toscano, Olivia Toscano. A couple of sophomore goalies, Dan, in this game. We mentioned Caitlin Calden, the sophomore goalie for Suffield. And in net for Darian is Hallie Kreppen. Uh, you know, one of the hardest things in, in youth hockey is developing goalies. Uh, it's, it's difficult to do. The availability of coaching isn't quite what it is uh, with skaters. So when you get a good goalie at a young age, you really try to bring them along as, as quickly as you can. Uh, and it, it ends up not being that unusual to see a freshman or sophomore in net in a big game like this. Tropsa throws the puck a on great net. deflection there. And that is a goal by Caitlin Shan. As you can hear, the Darianne faithful in the background come alive as Chan puts Darianne up 1-0 here in the first period. Well, that, is, that is relentless pressure right there. I mean, hats off to the Southfield defense. I mean, they were packed in there. They were doing everything they could. They just couldn't get the puck out of the net area or get, get it covered up for a faceoff. And Chan was there to finally bury it home. That, that is disruption in front, uh, and that results in goals, as you saw right here. So a good start for Darianne as they score just under 10 minutes remaining in the first period. Wow. Great and the shot offensive there, assault continues by the Blue Wave. Yeah, that's Nell Niffin over there, freshman number 20. She, you can see how aggressive she is at, on the forecheck. Assisted by number 13, Elise Morrow. Well, the intensity on the ice here is just amazing. I mean, you see the energy, the speed at which they're skating. They're moving around, attacking the puck. This is on both sides. The score may be 1-0, but this has been a pretty evenly matched game so far. Elise Morrow with the assist on that Caitlin Chan goal. Good no call there by the refs. There was some contact there, but this is a championship game. They're going to let them play. And unless, unless they see an elbow out or a push, they're not going to make that call. This is an important time in the game here. You know, it's one nothing early. Uh, Darianne feeling good carrying that lead, but it can go very quickly. And if you're the Suffield team, really no need to pressure. Just, just, keep, just keep doing what you're doing. You're playing well, and you're only down one, and it's very early in the game. But... You score another goal here quickly, and it's 2-0. The game starts to feel different. Similarly, Suffield manages to put the net in 1-1. There's a message there that you're not getting this championship from us so easily. Sure, sure. Here comes Darianne now, three on two into their offensive zone. Toscano <laughs> throws it on net into the far corner. Now she's fond of that deke. That's a great shot. You know, she's got a pretty strong wrist shot, uh, strongest one in my family anyway, <laughs> and, uh, and likes to get it on net. And a great atmosphere, as uh, Dan Toscano alluded to at the outset of our broadcast. Both uh, schools well represented here this afternoon at Bennett Rink. State finals of the Connecticut High School Girls Hockey Association. Here comes uh, Darianne going the other way. That's Kit Eriks with the puck. Has it poked away by Taylor Guglone. Another non-call by the refs here. I think, you know, they've got to be careful. You know, they want to let these kids play, but if they keep amping up the contact, at some point, they'll start to lose control of the game. So I wouldn't be surprised the next person who puts a hit on like that finds themselves in the box, regardless of which team they're on. Taylor Jablone, the field hockey player of the year in Connecticut. I'll have to go see her afterwards, see if she's coming to UConn. <laughs> next year. She's actually headed to the University of New Haven to play field hockey. Well, I haven't met her yet. 
<laughs> we'll see what happens get, get. later. <laughs> Under seven minutes uh, remaining in the first period. Damian Andrew alongside Dan Toscano. Good icing there. That, that's a good opportunity for Darian to get some fresh legs out there. You know, with the way these rules work in, in high school hockey, that icing becomes a strategic advantage for a team that's been out on the ice a long time. Of course, Darianne coming off a big state semifinal win over its rival, New Canaan 3-1 at the rinks of, at Shelton on Friday night. And Suffield Enfield coming off a win over Branford. Branford, Dan, as you well know, a team that upset the top seed in this state tournament, Greenwich. Yeah, you know, the thing that puzzles me about that game was the final score, uh, because we know that Branford team is a, is a good team much as this Suffield team is, so we would have expected a, a more even game than, uh, than at least the scoreboard was indicating. Darian. Good job by Darian here, getting the puck out of the net, out of the, out of the uh, uh, defensive end. There was some very good pressure there by Suffield. Here, here comes Kate Bellissimo breaking through. Bellissimo with a shot. Five hole, you know, that, that shot, it was starting to slip off the end of her stick there, but just enough to actually keep it low to get it in the five hole right through for a 2-0 lead. Kate Bellissimo, her fourth goal in as many games, actually had a hat trick in that win over New Canaan the other night. Yeah, say what you want. She's young, but she has a nose for the net, and she is as competitive as, as any young player I've ever seen. And just getting through those two defensemen there, she could have easily just dumped the puck in, but she said, no, I've got a little extra speed in, in, in my legs. I'm going to go put this in the net. It's hard to believe that Kate Lissimo is only a freshman. Corinne Bevel with the assist, and Shay Vandenbrook credited with assist on that Bellissimo goal. Oh. Okay, I'm not quite sure how that escaped the call. Oh, he, I think we got it. Yeah, there was a good uh, hook there by the, the uh, Suffield player. So it is 2-0 Darianne in the first period of this state championship game against Suffield Enfield, the combined team from Suffield Enfield. And if you're Joe Gazi right now, th th this will frustrate you a little bit. You know, your team is down 2-0, first period. And you're trying to keep everybody calm, and you take a, a penalty that, frankly, you really want to avoid. Now they've got to kill off two minutes of a, of a penalty kill here against the team from Darianne that you can tell they want to put this game away early. Darianne on the power play after the hooking penalty. Now remember in the game Friday night, they changed how they were running this power play. And the puck is covered up by Caitlin Calden. Yeah, good cover there. But remember, they're, they're trying to work that puck back up to the points and, and get the puck in on the net with at least one, if not two, of the forwards in front of the net to try to either deflect it or get a rebound. We'll see if that continues today. So far, it looks that way. Sophia Lapone, I'm sorry. Uh, Sophia, yes, yeah, Sophia Lapone uh, in the penalty box for Suffield whistled for that hooking penalty. So we're skating five on four here for the next minute 29. 504 remaining in the first period. Blue Wave out to a 2-0 lead. Thanks so much for joining us on this DAF Media broadcast. And that is a goal as Shea Vandenbrook. Yeah, I think that'll be credited to Bevel, but uh, it was Shea's shot that got it in front. It looked like it was deflected and tipped in. But we'll see what the referees have to say. So it was uh, Vandenbrook with the shot. She has had such a big season, the junior from Darianne. And we'll see if, in fact, Corinne Bevel is credited with the goal. We'll wait for the official yes. announcement, but I'm putting my money on, on Bevel there with the assist to Shea, but uh, I'm sure they don't really care at this point. They'll just take the three nothing lead with 4.48 left in the first period. Darian Ball, a power play goal. Score number 16, Shea Vandenbrook. I lost the bet. They do. Assisted by number 23, Kiki Trapso. 
Kiki Tropsa with the assist on the Vandenbrook goal. So Vandenbrook is credited with the Darien goal. The third goal of the period for the Blue Wave. So if you're Darien head coach Jamie Tropsa, Dan, you have to be tickled pink at the way your team has started in this state championship game. Yeah, you know, he's, he, I mentioned early in the game, he had his third line out there early in the game. They've been out there for a couple of shifts. But as soon as they got on that power play, you saw Kate Bellissimo double shifting again. And with a 3 nothing lead, he has the luxury of continuing to run three lines on uh, uh, forwards and keep his, keep his experienced players as fresh as possible because no lead is safe in hockey and it's certainly Absolutely. no first period lead is safe. Anything can happen. So the, the better rested they are throughout this game, the stronger they'll be if, if they're needed late in the game. You see the third line out here again. And don't, don't, don't you think they want to score a goal? That third line, they're scrappy. They get a lot of minutes um, and a lot of time spent on the ice, but they want to put the puck in the net as well and get themselves on that score sheet. I look out on the ice and see Kiki Tropsa. She was a member of that Darien field hockey team that made it all the way to the state finals, only to lose in the championship game to Staples. So I know she would like nothing more than to come away victorious this afternoon here at Bennett Rink. And this is an opportunity for Suffield. Absolutely great pass there. It left the left winger wide open. But Hallie Kreppen was, had that angle covered so well that really she only had the upper right corner of that net to possibly get a shot off in. And, and she was a little bit sort of center net high. Hallie smothered it, kept it from, uh, from dribbling into the net. Great save there by Hallie. And Suffield sophomore Genevieve Bushy with the shot there that was stopped by Kreppen. Here comes Darianne going the other way. Corinne Bevel throws it on net, almost goes in. Yeah, that caught the crossbar and just, uh, and just rolled over the top of the net. A really, really outstanding pass at the blue line from Bellissimo there. So she can't, not only scores, but she's got really good instincts on the ice, had her head up and saw Corinne Bevel stre streaking up the left side, put her in a great position for a shot. As Shea Vandenbrook dumps the puck into the Suffield zone. If you're Suffield head coach Joe Gazi, what are you gonna tell your team in the first intermission? A young team, this is only their second year of ex in existence, down three nothing right now with 2.15 remaining in the first period. Yeah, I don't think there'll be any conversation about how young a program they are. I mean, these girls have been skating for years. You can see the skill there. Uh, there's a great program up in that neck of the woods, the Northern Lights, and, uh, and also the Simsbury program draws from the area. So they've had a lot of experience skating. So I don't think he's going to focus so much on that. But I think he's probably going to say something to the effect of, Let's just go out and win the second period. Yeah. Don't worry about the first period. Let's win the second period, whatever that means, and then we'll see what that leaves for the third period. You mentioned Simsbury. Of course, Darianne beating Simsbury. 3-0 in the state quarterfinals. A shot. Yeah, that's Niffin with, the, with a nice Niffin. shot. Right, getting a little chippy in there. You definitely don't want to see that happen. I think you're going to see two players find their, their way over to us. You know, defenseman's job there when the whistle blows is to protect your goalie, which they did, maybe with a little bit too much gusto. Uh, Darian players will have nothing of that. So I, I assume they'll be skating five on five here, but we'll see a couple of players in the bench. Oh. So Taylor Jalone. Well, so far only one. Jalone from Suffield is in the oh, here we go. penalty <laughs> box, and Kit Eriks is also going to take a seat in the penalty box as well. Yeah, her reward for taking a beating down there is a couple of minutes <laughs> in the box, but you know they do whatever they, whatever it takes. That's that's the right call, um, and I think the referees just they need to keep this game under control. You know, there's a lot of emotion flowing out there, but there's a lot of hockey left to be played. And so an offensive zone draw on the far side of the ice for Darian as. Suffield trying to clean, clear this puck out of their zone. Must have been a hand pass whistle there. I didn't see the, uh, the hand pass myself, but. So we'll do it all over again. Face off on the far side of the ice. Yeah, the puck must have hit the net. If that was a uh, hand pass, the, the face off would be outside the zone. Another shot nice. on net. 
Nice save by Calden. Field, number 28, Taylor Gaglione for Darien. Number 21, Kent Oryx. Feature save, two minute minors for roughing. Time of penalties, 13 29. Of the first nice pass forward ahead here by Simsbury, uh, Suffield team. I've got Simsbury out of my head by the end of the first period. Apologies to anybody from Suffield and the uh, surrounding areas who might be watching with us this afternoon. And again, we are on tape delay here because of some technical issues with the internet connectivity here at Bennett Rink. But so happy to bring you this state championship in high school girls ice hockey as Tropsa tracks it down behind her net. Under 30 seconds remaining in the first period. Darianne up comfortably three to nothing. This is where experience really pays off. You saw Kiki holding that puck behind the net. There's 28 seconds left in this period. We're not so much worried at Darien about scoring another goal here. They're just worried about keeping Suffield off the board and not having a, a little momentum boost going into the, the locker room here. And that will do it for the first period. Darien in front, three to nothing. In the first period for Suffield, number 35, Caitlin Calden had 12. For Darien, number three, Dan, Suffield here's a, a look at uh, the team's path to the state finals. So Darianne knocking off Simsbury in that quarterfinal matchup, three to nothing. Then of course the big win over their arch rivals, New Canaan, Friday night in Shelton. That gets them to this point back in the state championship, trying to win their third straight state title. And of course Suffield with a big win in the state quarterfinals, then the win over Branford in the state semis, and they are here in the state finals for the first time in program history, and as we have alluded to in the first period, it's a program history that is very recent, just two years, the first year as a varsity program, so really to get to this point is saying something for head coach Joe Gazi and his staff and these girls on the ice. Yeah, and, and these are the kids who are really building the foundation for those who will come behind them. You can imagine with an experience like this going to a state championship game in just their second year of existence, when they're putting this team together next year, uh, the interest level is going to continue to rise. And, and uh, this is great for Connecticut girls hockey. Um, it's great for the girls themselves to have that environment to be able to get yep. out there and play. So, you know, this is, uh, this is a terrific thing. I think at some point, uh, the state will have to look to increase the size of this tournament as the number of really quality teams continues to grow. Absolutely. Well said. We are going to take a quick break, and we will be back with second period action here on the DAF Media Network. And we are underway here in the second period of the state championship game between Darianne and Suffield Enfield. Darianne in the white sweaters, skating from right to left. Suffield Enfield, the combined team in the blue sweaters, skating from left to right. Darianne up three to nothing after three first period goals. We are just underway here in the second period. Damian Andrew alongside Dan Toscano and what an offensive output by the Blue Wave in the first period with goals by Kate Bellissimo, Caitlin Chan, and Shea Vandenbrook. Yeah, and I, I can't even talk about the first period yet because of all the action going on right now. I mean, they dropped the puck here to start the second period. I noticed Jamie's got his second line of forwards out here. Uh, not sure what exactly he's, uh, he's trying to accomplish there, but maybe just to, uh, to make sure that these guys come out with a lot of energy. And instantly they were down with a really uh, nice shot that just missed the net and more pressure. And here we are a minute into the first period, and uh, Darianne's been, uh, been really dominating play early on here. But that first period, uh, if, if you're the Darianne team, if you're that coaching staff over there, I'm not sure what you said in the second in the uh, in the locker room, other than that's about as good as we can play, and I need you to do that again. Uh, I suspect that's not what they said, um, but that's the fact. That was a an amazing period against a very very good team, um, and I can't underscore that enough. What they did out there against a very strong, very experienced Suffield team, 
uh, is not to be taken lightly. And here the pressure continues, another shot on net. Puck skates in front of the Suffield net. No, it's a great point by you. This is a Suffield team that beat Brantford the other day in the state semifinal, seven to nothing. Scored seven goals in that state semifinal win over Brantford, a team that had upset Greenwich four to one in the state quarterfinals, as we have talked about. That's right, and I think you know that's the one thing you worry about if you're the Darien team is these guys can obviously put the puck in the net and they can put up numbers and they can do it in a hurry. So uh, I'm not, I, I'm sure that the coaches on the Darien side are not feeling comfortable with a three goal lead here. But the pressure just continues here going into three minutes now with shots on or near the net and, and offensive pressure by the Darien team. The puck hasn't been down at, uh, at, in front of Hallie Kreppen uh, other than for a couple of seconds. Here's that crazy number seven trying to get to the net. And you can see she's getting <laughs> abused. And I hope, they, I hope they credit her with the goal for the beating that she just took to allow that puck to get to the net. That is another Darianne goal as the Blue Wave take a 4-0 lead here in the second period. And we are just getting started here in this second period. Yeah, I think that, that goal belongs to Lucy Edwards, the freshman number 15, uh, but it could go either way. We'll wait for the official call. The referee's talking to the Suffield goalie to see if there was some complaints about maybe some goalie interference there, which I'm sure she, she was probably suggesting took place. Now the referees are conferring. Well, but we do know this, that goal will either go to Lucy Edwards or number seven, Olivia Toscano. Well, I don't get a vote, but you know what it'd be. I love Lucy. Her family's standing 10 feet away from me, so I better be careful, but we'll, we'll just take the goal no, no matter how. And the goal is in fact scored by Lucy Edwards. Assisted by number seven, Olivia Toscano. And Toscano with the assist. As uh, her proud papa joining us here on the Edwards DAF Toscano Media Network. Damian Andrew alongside Dan Toscano, so glad you could be with us on this tape-delayed broadcast of the... You see the hustle there by Captain Martin, if you're watching from home. Stepped right in front of that forward from Suffield who was waiting for a pass, and that just kept the puck in the zone, pinched up. That's just great hustle there by the freshman, Catherine Martin. So it's four to nothing. Darianne after the goal by Lucy Edwards. Edwards, the freshman forward, another one of those really talented freshmen on this Darianne team. They have a number of them. And the puck in the Darianne offensive zone as Suffield tries to clear it out. Catherine Martin dumps the puck back in the Suffield zone. So we got four goals here for the Darien team. One goal, uh, each line, each forward line has one goal. Uh, really, really good balance. The first line has two, second line has one, and the third line has one. There's Caitlin Chan. She throws it on net, and it's covered up by Caitlin Calden. Chan with a first period goal. You know, it's tough being a goalie. Um, they say they're no a, breed, a breed apart. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very lonely existence out there. Uh, you're the only person who does what they do. And when you get down in a game like this, it's really easy to, uh, to lose your focus, to lose your confidence. And it's really important. I think you'll see uh, between the whistles, uh, some of those Suffield players coming by the goalie just to reinforce to her that you're a great player. Don't yep. worry. We're going to get you back in this. Just, just hang in there with us. Here comes some Suffield pressure right now. A great shot on goal by number 13. That was Nora Birmingham, and Darianne's able to clear it out of their zone. Shea Vandenbroek dumps it into the Suffield zone. One of the hard things about being a goalie is we have a penalty coming up here. Looks like a trip. And it will be a tripping penalty. I didn't see it. Looks like it's going against Darian. Tripping penalty on the blue wave, so we'll be skating five on four here momentarily. Yeah, nobody seems to want to take responsibility <laughs> for it. We, we do need a player over here in the net, I mean in the penalty box. 
Uh, but just going back to that play before the whistle, you know, Halley really had to stand her ground there. There were two forwards there uh, trying to control that crease, and she held her ground. That was a, a great pat, a save off the left, uh, the left leg pad, and then she held her ground in there so that they couldn't stuff that puck home. Uh, really, really nice job there by the sophomore, Hallie Kreppen. Corinne Bevel will spend some time in the sin bin for the next uh, two minutes here. 11 minutes remaining in the second period. And a nice clear. Look at the hustle here by Nell. There's no, there's no uh, icing here. Uh, she beat them down there, and now she's going to kill some clock. So Darianne's penalty kill unit on the ice here for the next minute 40. They're too deep uh, on the uh, on the Darian forwards here. You can do that occasionally when you have talent like this. Look at what Nell's done out here to just control this power play uh, penalty kill. A nice yeah. shot on net there, stick to side. By Elise Morrow with the shot. So that won't show up on the scoreboard anywhere. But the minute that that Nell Niffen just spent on the ice, not only getting the puck out of the defensive zone dropping it down into the, uh, into the uh, offensive zone, then chasing it down ahead of the Suffield player, killing time behind the net. I mean, she controlled the game for about 30 seconds. That's 25% of that penalty. Yes. And now we're back, almost back to five on five here. That's a great point. It's the little things that don't oftentimes show up in the stat sheet. Really great play by Suffield there to get to the net. But Hallie was right there, ready for the save. Now they've got some pressure brewing here and trying to cycle it around. Suffield trying to get on the scoreboard on the power play for the next 35 seconds. Almost had the deflection there. Darian clears the zone. They should get a change here very quickly. And fresh legs on the ice for the Blue Wave. Well, fresh legs is an understatement for number 14, Caitlin Chan. <laughs> As we talked about before, a figure skater by day, a hockey player by night. Yep. But she's one of the fastest skaters you'll ever see. Uh, the grace with which she does it, that's just, an, that's just a bonus. Darian getting a late change here. Almost had too many men on the ice. Here comes Suffield. Puck in the far corner as Darian tries to clean it, clear it out of their zone. Here's Nicolescu up against the boards. Throws it in front of the Darian net. That was a good opportunity for Suffield. And it's taken away by Corinne Bevel. Puck in the neutral zone. Just follow Nell Niffin around a little bit on this <laughs> shift. I mean, talk about energy. She is all over the place. She's a fast skater. She's a, she's a skilled hockey player. She almost single-handedly killed that penalty for the blue wave. Drops so going in the, the board, so you got to call that. There and you that go. That will be a penalty. Took a little while for the ref to, just to make up his mind, but that was a clear check into the boards. Allowed in the boys' game, but not in the girls' game. Genevieve Bushy will be uh, called for the penalty here as she will head to the box. Referee's calling it a high stick. I'm not sure that I saw a high stick, but I did see a check into the boards. Either way, it's a two-minute penalty, so I guess uh, we're none the worse for wear. I stand corrected. Sophia Lapone headed into the box, not Bushy. Lapone, one of three All-State uh, players on the ice for Suffield. Suffield penalty wearing jersey number 22, Sophie Lapone, a two-minute minor for high sticking. Town penalty 729. Lapone for high sticking. Watch how they cycle this puck around here. Patience to get the open shot rather than just to get any shot. Vandenbrook. Really good job keeping that shot low there by Shea Vandenbroek. You'll see these shots come in, some low, some high. You can't, you can't become too predictable. That's going to be played with a high stick. There should be a whistle and a face-off down in the Darien end. So it will be an offensive zone faceoff here for Suffield. And if you're Suffield and head coach Joe uh, Gaza, 7.05 remaining in the second period, your team down four to nothing. You gotta try to make something happen here in the late stage of the second period in order to try to get back into this game. Yeah, I think what he's saying on the bench to his players right now is stay out of the expletive omitted <laughs> penalty box. 
<laughs> we're never going to win this game playing down 4-5, which is what they're doing right now. They have taken a number of penalties, yes. Wow. Nice oh. stop by Kreppen. That was a great shot. It was deflected in off of Shape Vandenbroek's stick accidentally, but it doesn't matter how it gets there. And really good job by Halley of staying focused on the puck. That should be an offsides there on Darian. And you are one step ahead of the officials as that was an offsides call. Well, I'm live. We're on tape delay, so <laughs> I already know who won this game. I'm just not going to tell anybody. <laughs> we are on tape delay here on the DAF Media Network. Had some uh, technical difficulties getting this broadcast uh, on live from Bennett Rink. We're not allowed to badmouth the, uh, the <laughs> Internet service provider, right? So we'll just no. anonymous... <laughs> Uh, multinational big corporation. And that shot by Elise Morrow sails wide. There's Cassidy. So that looked like a yeah. shot that missed the net, but actually what that was was really trying to get a deflection off of Nell who was in front of the net. So you're not necessarily going to put every shot right on the net if you're going to look for that deflection from somebody either just a little outside the right or, or the left side of that, uh, of that net. Chan nearly got off another shot. And she has played well this afternoon for the Blue Wave, credited with a goal in the first period. Puck along the uh, near boards here. Uh, it's another Suffield penalty coming up here. And so as yep. Lapone skates back on the ice from the box, Suffield draws another penalty. 5.25 remaining in the second period. Damian Andrew, Dan Toscano, so glad you could be with us for this well, state championship in high school girls hockey. Well, that was a cross check on, on number 13, Nora Birmingham, and she slammed the door down here with some frustration. I, I understand her frustration. It was certainly not uh, her intention when she went in to make that play, but w when, it, when it looks like a, a, a body check, they're going to call it. Shea Vandenbroek and Sophie Lapone on the draw there. As we were talking a minute ago, you know, if you're Suffield, you're not going to win this game playing four on five, or it's highly unlikely. And uh, as soon as they clear that penalty, they're, they're back in the box again. So that, that's really been the story of this second period. Uh, only one goal here for Darianne, but they've had the opportunity to, uh, to be on the power player a lot, which, uh, among other things, you know, aside from keeping Suffield, giving them good offensive chances, it tires them out. You know, you generally are going to have your best defensive players out there to yeah. kill those penalties. And that's they're a, a lot point. of times your best offensive players as well. And, they're spending all their time killing penalties. They get tired, and there may not be en enough gas left in the tank to try to score down the other end. And the pup, puck goes up into the netting. Stoppage in play here, 4.30 remaining in the second period, and it is 4-0. Darianne in the state finals. Blue Wave trying to three-peat. They've done it twice before in the last two seasons here at Bennett Rink, winning state titles. They go for three in a row today. And right now, up four goals on Suffield and Field. One of the things that makes this second period look different than the first, where there was a lot of speed and there was a lot of action, here you see a lot more of this, you know, in basketball term, half-court offense, mm -hmm. which makes the game look a lot slower, makes the skaters look a lot slower. But that's just a function of all these power play opportunities they've had. What an amazing pass. What a great save. Puck trip trickles and in front of the net. I think that puck may have touched every part of the red yep. going across that crossbar and managed to, to roll right out, luckily, for the Suffield team. But to your point, Caitlin uh, Calden, the sophomore goalie for Suffield, with a terrific save. And here comes Darianne again. A nice cross-ice pass there to Chan. Yeah, that save has got to be a good confidence booster for her. Uh, she's playing really well out there. I mean, th there's been a couple of goals on net, one of them a power play goal. Uh, this Darianne team is just, uh, they are on fire today. And if they keep playing like this, I'm not sure the Suffield team can, can, can come back from down 4 nothing. But there's still, again, a lot of hockey to be played. And at the end of the day, these are all teenagers. So anything goes. And 
to your point again, Calden has been peppered with shots by Darianne this afternoon. Well, we'll see if we can get some stats between the second and third period on that. Uh, but shots on goal, uh, one thing, but shots near the goal, which don't show up yep. there. Yep. Uh, she's been under attack for, for a good part of uh, this entire game. Nice play there by Corinne Bevel to dump the puck. And the backhanded shot by Vandenbroek stopped by Calden. Yeah, that, that, that was a nice backhand shot. Um, a better save. I mean, that's a, that's a quality save. Yeah, that was a point-blank save by Calden. There's Catherine Martin with the puck along the near boards. Trying to get the puck up ice. Again, Darianne in the white sweaters. Suffield in the royal blue sweaters. Here's Kate Drugan at the blue line. Darianne continues to attack here in their offensive zone. Under two minutes remaining in the second period. And the puck trickles into the Darianne zone, handled by Kate Drugan. Corinne Bevel. One of the highlights of this game, I think, for the Darianne team has been the, the quality of the passing. I mean, they are going stick to stick, pucks flat on the ice, uh, skating, you know, putting the puck where the player's going. It really, really makes a difference. Now watch this for now. Watch the pass here. Three on one here. Chops her. Oh, offside. And that's going to be an offside <laughs> call. She went five hole. And <laughs> yeah, she, she knew. She knew that was an offside, or she would have. You know, she would have given up the puck, and the goalie didn't even bother to try to save it. So it may have looked pretty. It'll be a good highlight reel for her, as long as people don't realize it, she was offside. It looked pretty. It certainly did. But the offsides call on Darianne, and it'll be a neutral zone faceoff here. Elise Morrow and Molly Dowd on the draw. You know, I said this in the first period, but uh, I know they're down four goals. But when you think about this, the infinite, the, the, how young this program is for Suffield, to get to a state championship game against one of the real state powerhouses in Darien certainly speaks volumes about uh, no, the look, state look, of your program here early on. Absolutely. And look at the pressure they're putting on here in the last minute. I mean, they, this pressure could easily lead to a goal. Yeah, there is no give up here in Suffield, that's for sure. No, one roll of the puck here, one nice shot that gets in the net, and they're going into the locker room feeling very different. Under 30 seconds remaining in the second period, Darien up 4 nothing. And I think when it comes to a, a new program like this, getting this far, this fast, these players on the ice are not satisfied, right? They want to win this. Sure. They want to be state champs. The program is happy to be here, but the players want to win. It doesn't matter if you're in the second year of a program or the 30th year, you want to win when you get an opportunity to play on this stage, the final day of the season for high school girls hockey in the state of Connecticut. And that'll do it for the second period. We are going to take a quick break and we will be back with third period action here on the DAF Media Network. We are underway here, third period of this state championship game between Darianne and Suffield Enfield, the co-op team. Damian Andrew alongside Dan Toscano. Darianne up four goals as we start the third period here at Bennett Rink in West Haven. Well, there's uh, 15 minutes left of hockey here, and I will say that if you're anywhere in the state of Connecticut, uh, you should get down here, uh, particularly if you're a fan of arena rock and uh, very loud music. <laughs> uh, pay your eight bucks. You probably get in for five at this point. But, uh, but come on down. There's going to be a state champion uh, crowned here in 15 minutes. We still don't know who it's going to be. Right now, it looks like it's, it's heading Darian's way, but there is plenty of hockey to be played here. And don't rule anything out. This, this Suffield team scored seven goals Friday night. Don't forget that. 
No, great point. This is a great barn, though, a, a great barn to watch a hockey game in, that's for sure. Yeah, and I can tell you that uh, for any of the, the parents of players here or, or older siblings, this is a, this is a, game, a rink where a lot of championships have been awarded. Uh, so it's, it's great to be here uh, adding championship uh, outcomes for so many players to remember, yeah, we did that at Bennett and West Haven. Yeah, this is the site of Darien's previous two state championships in 2016 and 2017, trying to make it three in a row here this afternoon. And right now, it certainly looks good if you are a Blue Wave fan. Darien up 4 nothing on Suffield and Field. Yeah, no change in lineups here for Jamie. He's, he's rolling his three lines of forwards and his, and his two lines of D. I don't think he's going to change anything at this point. And with a 4 nothing lead against a good Suffield team, I think his players are doing the things that he expects them to do, keeping the mistakes to a minimum, playing smart hockey. Now they need to just keep it, keep it rolling for 13 minutes. Meanwhile, if you're Suffield, you have to start doing things a little bit differently here, right? I mean, they, haven't, they haven't scored yet. They've had some really good pressure opportunities. And you can see from watching the game that they're a skilled team. So they, they can still put themselves into this game, but number one, maybe number two, maybe number three, is stay out of the penalty box. Let's skate five on five and let's see what we can't do. A great block there by Olivia Toscano. Could lead to a breakaway here. There's a two on one situation for Darianne. And a nice defensive effort that time by number 12, Sidney Lapone, the senior defenseman for Suffield. Yeah. And the Wildcats trying to get the puck out of their zone. Which they do here, but you know, you wonder how those odd man rushes get set up. And that was a that was a, a shot block just inside, or just outside the circle here on the left side by <laughs> nice save there by Halley, holds on to it for a faceoff. Halley Kreppen, as we were talking about uh, during the intermission, Kreppen 11 saves in this game. That'll be her 12th. And Darianne, or uh, Suffield's goalie, rather, Caitlin Calden with 22 saves. Yeah, that's about what I would have expected. Actually, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was a little higher, but uh, I, uh, we don't track the actual shots here. But if we did, uh, there were a lot more that didn't, uh, that didn't get on net to be saved, but were were close by, you know, pressure shots that the goalie had to uh, that the goalie had to deal with. Oh, There's really Suffield, nice skating nice opportunity deep. there, and it's a save by Kreppen. I mean, if you're freshman Sophie Sophia Lupone, I mean, you got to be frustrated with that. I mean, she made an absolutely beautiful deke there to get around the defenseman yep. and had a really nice backhand shot there. Hallie stayed right with her, denied her the angle she was looking for, and that result is a, is a no goal. Uh, that easily could have been a goal. What a, a great play by Sophia. Puck in the uh, far corner in the Darianne zone, taken out by Shea Vandenbrook. There's Kate Bellissimo tracking it down. She'll get a shot wide of the near post. Yeah, you know, when you play defense, and you're deciding whether or not you're gonna be aggressive out at the point, like Suffield just was. One of the things you have to consider is, who's coming up on me there? And when Kate Bellissimo, number nine, is the person that's coming up on you, you wanna think twice about whether you wanna take chances there because you saw how she got that puck and took off with an errant stick there almost going in the net. I'm not sure you get credited with a goal for putting your stick in the net. <laughs> Kate Bellissimo will pick up her stick behind the Suffield net. That was a great shot from the point there by Kiki, the senior. Everybody have their sticks now? Kiki Trapsa playing in her final high school game, and she would like nothing more for it to end in celebration. Here's Kit Eriks. Drugan. Keeps it in the Suffield zone. Crowd here has mellowed out a little bit. I think the, uh, the Darianne fans maybe a little bit of premature anticipation here. And the Suffield fans wondering what's it going to take to get on the board every time we get a... Oh. Terrific shot by Colleen Cassidy. 
And a nice save by Caitlin Calden. Yeah, and that, that shot right there was set up by Kid Eric. She saw that puck come out to a wide open Colleen Cassidy who fired a really, really nice shot. Crossbar high, nice save by the goaltender. Two on one situation here for Suffield. Another nice move. Backhand shot is stopped by Kreppen. As Sophia Lapone, the junior forward, had a look. Couldn't bury the puck in the back of the net. Yeah, that was another great offensive opportunity for Suffield. But Hallie just follows the puck. She doesn't commit too soon. And that allows her to make that save look fairly easy, if I could say that. But it's not, I assure you. That's all about positioning and the decisions you have to make as a goaltender as that puck's coming in. You don't know if they're gonna pass it, you don't know if they're gonna, if they're gonna shoot it, maybe they're gonna deke, maybe they're gonna stop short. Uh, all those things you have about three-tenths of a second to decide. And Hallie's done a really great job today with her decision making. There's Kate Drugan as she skates in. <laughs> puck is pushed away by Calden. No call on the, on the hook there. That puck was, uh, that stick was wedged in, uh, in Kate's arm but the uh, their officials say play on. Under nine minutes remaining now in the third period. Here's Tropsa at the point. There'll be a penalty call, uh, call coming up here on, on Suffield. There's some action in front of the net, and Kate Bellissimo drew the penalty. And Kate, uh, Hallie Kreppen skating off to, in favor of the sixth skater. Now they can set up a little bit of a six on five here, as long as they can keep control of the puck, and they're doing a great job of it. If you're Suffield, you need to be careful up front to make sure you don't draw another penalty and give this Darien squad a two-minute five-on-three advantage. That would be devastating. So the whistle, and Suffield draws another penalty. 7.55 remaining in the third period as uh, Julia... Nicolescu will spend some time in the box now. The next two minutes, Darianne skating five on four. An offensive zone faceoff coming up for the Blue Wave. Now, as we said uh, between periods, the last thing you want to do if you're Suffield is go down a skater, uh, which they will be for the next two minutes. And Drew gets a, a breakaway the, opportunity. Yep. The puck. Here comes Suffield. Oh, what a great recovery by Kate Drugan there. Uh, by all rights, that should have been a, a breakaway. Geneva Bushy, Genevieve Bushy, I should say, trying to put the puck on net, but Drugan with a great defensive effort after giving up the puck in the neutral zone. Darian's got to be careful here. Suffield's going to take chances, as, as you saw right here, deep in their zone. They've got three people in the zone. They're trying to get a goal here shorthanded. And the stop by Hallie Kreppen. You know, we've talked a lot about the Suffield goalie, Caitlin Calden, who has just been peppered with shots. But boy, Hallie Kreppen has come up big in certain situations. Suffield's had a couple of opportunities, and uh, Kreppen has played well between the pipes. You know, we talked in the last game about the lonely life of being a Darianne goalie, <laughs> where, you know, there are sometimes entire games where you don't get a lot of action, but. When it happens, it happens fast and without any sort of advance notice, and, uh, and you're called on to do your job. So you really have to stay awake. I think Hallie does a terrific job of always being ready, no matter what the activity level is uh, on, en on either end of the ice. A good Darian pressure here. There's Tropsa, throws it on net. This Darian team has so much experience at the blue line and their defenseman. Puck loose in front. And it is cleared away by Suffield as they get it out of their zone. There's Cassidy to Vandenbrook. Vandenbrook near the near boards. Props at the blue line. Just look at the nice job they're, they, they're doing, moving that puck around, skating looking for the open shot. About four seconds left in this power play. And 
Another nice save by Calden. Here's Trapsa as she corrals the puck in her own zone into the neutral zone, and she dumps it in to the Suffield zone. Fresh legs on the ice for the Blue Wave. Yeah. Most games, that's a breakaway for the for the player Suffield player coming out of the penalty box. But with the experience, as I was saying before, yep. that this Darien team has at the blue line, that puck made its way to the net, covered by the goaltender. And that, that's what prevents that breakaway there, was she knew that player was coming out of the, out of the penalty box and was going to be looking for the puck. And she made sure she got back and disrupted it. Offensive zone faceoff for the Blue Wave. Puck near the near boards. Bushy races into the neutral zone, into the Darien zone. Tries to get a shot on it. It's cleared out by Toscano with a nice defensive effort there. My goodness, if you're, if you're Suffield, you're just scratching your head saying, what is it going to take to get the puck in the net? I mean, that's absolutely brilliant offensive play. It gets in there, it gets the good look, gets the shot off. Hallie's right there with it to push it away. And then number seven, who I think I met before, get that, got that puck out of, that, out of the defensive zone <laughs> nice, in a hurry. Nice defensive effort by Olivia Toscano to clear that puck out of uh, her own zone. 5.01 remaining in the third period. The uh, draw in the Suffield offensive zone. Tell you what, this third period has been very evenly played. It just goes to the, the overall skill of these two teams. I know it's 4 nothing, but there's no quit in either one of these teams, and there's a lot of talent out here. You see the Suffield team now putting some offensive pressure on. They're just looking to get a puck in the goal. There's still time, but they're a very talented team. I, I think the difference in a lot of this play is the amount of time that they've spent down a man. And they finally break through with a goal as Sophia Lapone, the All-Stater, beats Crepin to put Suffield on the scoreboard. Yep, that's really good pressure by Suffield. I mean, they, they were controlling the offensive zone there, moving it around, got people in front, got the puck there. Halley did what she could to make the save, and, uh, and it was put back in on, on the secondary shot there for, for a 4-1 score here with four minutes to go. Referee's checking to make sure the net is Secure. properly secured. Yep. I don't know what the conversation is. I'm sure Hallie's saying, uh, you didn't blow your whistle fast enough. That was no goal. <laughs> she wouldn't be a goalie if she wasn't arguing the call. Well, if you're Suffield, you have to feel good about that. You're on the scoreboard in your first ever appearance in the state finals. Yeah, the anxiety level up a little bit for Darianne here. Players saying, oh, there's a lot of time here. It doesn't take much. They're, this is a good Suffield team, as we've said time and time again. And they're not going to go down without a fight. Lupone is, in fact, credited with that goal. Nora Birmingham on the assist. Time of the goal, 10.40. Sophie Lupone from Birmingham and Sydney Lupone at 10.40 of the third period. I mean, this is the advantage right here of the Darianne team. Look at number three, freshman Catherine Martin. Takes the puck all the way from back by their own goal line, all the way up through the neutral zone and gets it deep. And Darian answers back with a goal as a result. I'm pretty sure that was Sally Cassidy putting that It was Sally in. Cassidy with the goal from kind of a weird angle, Dan, it, too. It, it was, it was a very odd angle and, and there was very little room to get that past the goaltender but she did, you saw her go up her shelf and, uh, and knock the water bottle off. That's very, very good concentration on the part of the Darien team to keep the pressure up and not let that one goal that Suffield scored just seconds ago change the outcome of this game. Now a 5-1 Darien lead with about three and a half minutes to go. Darien goal, score number 22, Sally Cassidy. The goal was unassisted, time of the goal, 11-22. Cassidy, unassisted, and 11-22 of the third period. 
You heard the PA announcer credit Cassidy with the goal. Sally Cassidy, of course, big part of that Darianne field hockey team in the fall. She'll play field hockey in college. 3-10 remaining in the third period as Darianne closes in on a third straight state championship. It's hard enough to win one, but to win three in a row is something special. And three players, four players fall to the ice here in the Darianne zone. And this creates a potential three on one here for the Darianne team. Cassidy to Eriks, really nice defense by the Suffield team to keep that from turning into a scoring opportunity. And there's a two on two, and it's poked away by Kate Drugan. Kate Drugan has had a terrific game. Yeah, she's had, a, she's had a terrific season. Yep. You know, she's a sophomore. She, she had a lot of ice time as a freshman last year. As, uh, as one of the mainstays of the Darian defense. So at this point in time, you know, she's got the experience of a junior or senior, and she's always been a very calm, very collected defensive player, rarely makes mistakes, and is always there to make up when someone else does. As you can see right here as she skates over. Grace Gazi throws it on net. Pushed away by Kreppen. Under two minutes remaining. Darianne certainly can feel it now. Up five to one in the state finals here at Bennett Rink in West Haven. Kreppen with another save. As yeah, she's doing it herself now. With no defenseman in front of her to help. And that is a goal by Suffield. I believe it was number 19, Anna Titman, the all-state forward who will play at Manhattanville College next year. Well, we said this, there's a lot of hockey left to be played. Boy, a, you weren't kidding, huh? A, a minute and a half to go, a 5-2 game. It's going to take a lot for Suffield to, to even this up. But stranger things have happened. That's why they play the game. At this point in the game, a play like what just happened here becomes important. Right? Defenseman can't keep the puck in the zone. That's going to cost Suffield probably 20 seconds when they only have about 70 or 80 left and need a lot of offense. So Darian team happy to see that puck get, get sent down there and winds about 30 seconds off the clock. So one minute to play here in the third period. The blue wave up five to two. Kiki drops it with the puck behind her net. As she tries to get the puck up ice, but it's turned over. Suffield now with an opportunity. They throw it on net. Well, they've, they've emptied their net. They've got six skaters in the zone here trying to do whatever they can to keep scoring goals here. But all it's going to take is one open Darianne player to get that puck in the empty net. Here they're just looking to kill a little bit of time. We'll work it around back and forth. Under 30 seconds remaining now. 5-2 Darianne. So glad you could join us on the DAF Media Network for this one. Puck in front of the Darianne net. Really? As Kreppen here has been busy in the third period. And the three-peat goes to the Darien Blue Wave. 5-2 final score. You can see the bench pouring out to congratulate their sophomore goalie, Hallie Kreppen, and everyone else for just an absolutely terrific game. It Credit to the, to the Suffield team. They did not quit. They played that third period. I would say they outplayed the Darien team by quite a bit. Put two goals on the board, but it just wasn't enough at the end of the day to overcome that 4 nothing deficit going into the third period. So it's a three-peat here at Bennett Rink in West Haven, Connecticut for the Darien Blue Wave girls ice hockey team as they go back to back to back, and that is something special. The Darien football team won its third straight state championship in the fall, and now 
The Darien girls hockey team wins its third straight state championship as the two teams meet at center ice to shake hands. And to period. your point, really a great Kate effort Kelly by Suffield in the third period. They tack on, they, they, they score those two goals to really feel good about themselves. Obviously not the result they were looking for this afternoon, but certainly a program that uh, will continue to build through the years. Only their second season in existence, first season as a varsity team. Yeah, and, and as we said, this is a new program and up and coming, but they made a statement here today. That Absolutely. We're here, we're for real. They'll be back next year, and they'll continue to grow hockey in, in North Central Connecticut. It's a great thing to see. L last thing I'll say about this Darien team while we wait for the awards is they're a good team, right? They've right. had a dominating season. The only team to beat them in, in Connecticut has been uh, the New Canaan, and they vanquished them in the semifinals and, and exercised that demon. But this is a great bunch of kids. You know, there are good teams, and there are good teams. But the chemistry that goes on in this team is you see them all celebrating, and I've had an opportunity to watch it over the course of the season, from seniors to freshmen. And they get along, time. they oh, look after so each so other, right. they Please take care of each other, and with that, I'm going to be quiet and let the uh, award ceremony take over. Absolutely. Dan, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on these broadcasts. We are just about ready for the award ceremony. We would first like to recognize the 2018 Connecticut High School Girls Ice Hockey Association State Runner-Ups, Suffield, Enfield, Ellington, MLC, and Housatonic. Please skate forward when your name is called to accept your medal. Number three, Cassidy Belgley. Number five, Megan Lenardi. Number six, Julia Nicolesu. Number eight, Chase Lammer. Number nine, Tori Maglio. Number 10, Brianna Chernick. Number 11, Kate Niederostik. Number 12, Sydney Lupon. Number 13, Nora Birmingham. Number 15, Molly Dow. Number 19, Anna Tippmann. Number 20, Grace Gazi. Number 22, Sophia Lupon. Number 23, Genevieve Bushy. Number 28, Taylor Gagliol. Number 53, Victoria Palmer Lavoie. Number 35, Caitlin Calden. Congratulations to head coach Joe Gazi and the entire Wildcat team for a well-played game in state tournament. And now let's recognize the team members of the 2018. Will coach Joe Gozi and the entire Wildcat captains please keep forward to accept your plaque. One thing I'll say about that team as we await the Darien Awards, 
Yeah, a lot of 10th and 11th graders that learned a lot yep. over the course of this season. Yep. And they will be back next year. And if I were Darian, I would not want to face them <laughs> in this game again. They certainly are hungry. I'm, I'm watching uh, Caitlin Calden and uh, she accepted her medal and kind of had this look on her face like uh, disappointment, obviously, but uh, a well-played game. She was peppered with shots, and we're just about ready to... We just watch Good. these Darian kids celebrate each other as they go out to get their medals. If this team, now, to accept, we'll to come accept back to this in a minute. Championship trophy for the 2018 Connecticut High School Girls Ice Hockey Association State Championship plaque with Darian head coach Jamie Tropsa and his team captains. Please skate forward. That says it all right there. You heard the great ovation for Hallie Kreppen, Darian sophomore goalie, did a terrific job in this game and the entire season. But Dan Toscano, I, I got to get your final thoughts here as uh, we end another chapter in this Darian girls hockey Ladies and gentlemen, our program. Final award is the state tournament most outstanding player award. Hold that. The recipient of the 2018 CHS. GHA State Tournament Most Outstanding Player is from Darien, number 30, Hallie Kreppen. Wow. So Hallie Kreppen named Most Outstanding Player in the State Tournament 
the sophomore goalie from Darien. And you can hear in the background chants of Hallie, Hallie. She certainly stood tall between the pipes this season and in this game for the Blue Wave. She did. You know, it's not about the number of saves in this game that resulted in her being the most outstanding player. It's what she did every time that talented uh, Sheffield team came in with a really good move and had a good shot. I mean, it could easily have been a 5-5 score if it weren't for Hallie. And my only hope, as you know, she's young, she's just a sophomore, I hope she doesn't forego her eligibility to go pro. <laughs> Some talented, uh, talented uh, underclassmen on this Darien team, to your point. So the future certainly looks bright as they take a team picture at center ice. And this, this is a balanced team, and it, and it, and it comes, we talked about it before, from having a feeder program like the Ice Cats, which is growing so strong and continues to add teams and attract players. Every year there's players coming in. This year, six freshmen on this team that Jamie will get to abuse for the next three years until they're standing up here as seniors. It's all about balance, and they have it. And, I, and if you look around the stands, there are a number of sixth, seventh, eighth grade kids with Ice Cats jackets on here to root on this team to yep. try to figure out what's it gonna be like for me when I get here. Um, and I guess in closing, we've talked a lot about this team, so I won't, I won't go through it all again, but if, if this team were a high school class, it would be chemistry. With that, point. I'm gonna sign off. Great point, it's been great having you these last three broadcasts. We'll do it again next year, no doubt about it. Dan Tos Toscano. And, uh, but before you close, yep. okay, I know you close every game, and I know you're about to do it, where you call out all of this great resources that you have from the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation, and these young people who make all this stuff work. I don't know how any of this stuff works. I just try not to trip over it. Um, and I know you're going to thank them. But before you do, I want to give a shout out to you, uh, because you are here day in and day out, uh, an experienced veteran of this world, and you bring not only this team and Darianne in general, not just athletics now, but bra branching out to the rest of the world. And I know there are scores of grandparents and aunts and uncles and, co and cousins who are able to experience this game because of your efforts and what you bring to them. So I would like to thank you for not only bringing a professional broadcast to the amateur nonsense that I bring here, um, but for teaching these kids and making all of this possible. So Damien, thank you very well, much. Thank you very much. That's so kind of you to say that. And uh, you have just been a wealth of knowledge these last three games throughout this state tournament. Uh, and so it's been such a great uh, addition to these broadcasts having you here with us. But uh, I will give a shout out to Brendan Ross, who has really been our ace in the hole uh, this season for the DAF Media Network. Did a terrific uh, job, helped uh, get this uh, tape delay broadcast on, ran main camera for us uh, throughout this game. So uh, shout out to Brendan Ross and uh, for Dan Toscano, I am Damian Andrew, and this has been a production of the Darien Athletic, Fo uh, the DAF Media Network rather, a uh, joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. Again, Darien beat Suffield five to two to win the state championship in high school girls hockey. Have a great night, everybody. Take care.